Hey everyone, it's Carrie with my friends Call Me Martha, and yes, I got that nickname um, because I like to craft and I think I'm pretty good in the kitchen. Um, so my friends used to tease me and say I was Martha Stewart. So anyways, I am here today um, with our, I think this is either the fifth or sixth um, video for the Christmas in July series that I am doing. And I just wanted to give a quick plug for the paper pumpkin kit. Um, you have until the 10th of the month to order and get this box here called Sending Good Thoughts. Um, and if you do a prepaid subscription where you pay for three months in advance, you'd get to pick a celebration item up to the $50 reward level. So there's some great papers. Um, there is a hippo stamp set and hippo dies. So there's a lot of, um, and then note cards and another stamp set. So it's a great time um, to join um, the Paper Pumpkin subscription, which is a monthly craft kit box that comes. Um, so that is what I have to say about that. If you are going to place an order, if you could use the July host code, that will link right over to my Stampin' Up! shop. And I think that's it. So today we are going to be using the Christmas Scotty once again, but I am going to show you a Christmas version and then it, we're going to make an everyday version. Um, so you can see that this set is more than just Christmas. So we are going to start um, by stamping our doggy. And I am using the Stamparatus for this. Um, like I've said in other videos, if you've been tuning in, I struggle with stamping with my um, black Memento ink. I don't know if it's me or um, if it's the ink pad, but it is a struggle. So anyways, I use the Stamparatus, which allows, it's a, um, I guess they call it a positioning tool. I, I can't remember the technical name, but it allows me to stamp a second time in the same exact spot if it doesn't stamp well. So. It is a great addition. If you're an avid crafter, um, I would highly recommend it. And then I got this little cute gizmo on Etsy, but um, you can also just use a um, hockey air hockey table puck and then just add some felt to the bottom. That's basically what they did. This is some sort of, I wanna say it looks like a mason jar cover kind of thing, so. All right, so that was one time. You see how it's got a little bit of, um, it's always his back. So what I'm gonna do, just add a little more ink and stamp it again. So this is great too, if you're making like a gajillion cards, <laughs> like some people do for Christmas, you can um, set up your template with, you know, the greeting, whatever. And as long as you know where you're putting it, I always try to do something that is gonna be right in the corner. Um, to make it easy to line it up. All right, and then while we're here, we're actually, I need a, we're gonna use a white piece of cardstock. Oh, I didn't cut one, oh boy. Hopefully I have another piece right here. And this one, I don't really need the magnet because I know to just go to the corner because it's a much larger piece than what I need. And again, just rub it, make sure I got, and see how it's trying to hold on to it. But I know to just go right back in the corner. And it does have some faded kind of spots, so I'm just gonna ink it one more time. And then we should be all set with our little second dog for our second card. Much better. Okay, so we are done with the Stamparatus. And now, what's great, um, I didn't, did I show the stamp set? Oh yeah, here it is. See, I've already made like a mess of my crafting desk. It's bad. Um, there's two other dog images in it, um, but only the punch stamps out one of them. So, and then I need to cut this. It's too long to get in the punch. You always wanna um, make your paper I know it seems wasteful, but um, you want a place to be able to hold on to your piece of paper. So always make your paper bigger 
than the area so that you have a way to move it around. Okay, so that's gonna be our one dog. And then this one I need to also cut so that I can get the punch around it. And I'm just making sure I have a little bit of white all the way around. And there you go. So I love a punch bundle because it, it's just so easy. Um, and for those of you who, who may not have a cut and emboss machine, this is um, a great alternative to be adding um, to your collection in your craft room. Okay, so we're gonna first make the Christmas card. And I am using Evening Evergreen and what I wanted to also do is I wanted to use an embossing folder to just add a little step up for this card. So you can see here, this is just a, um, a normal card base and then my first layer is four and a quarter, I'm sorry, five and a quarter by four. And I didn't emboss it or anything, it's just a plain piece of cardstock. But I wanted to kind of do this with these um, like evergreen leaves. And I'm thinking I just want it at the top of my card and not necessarily the bottom. So let me get my machine. Today's video might end up being a little bit longer than and because it is a 3D um, embossing folder, um, this size is meant to go in the small machine, but because I'm orienting the paper a different way, it won't work. So, oops, hold on, am I doing too many, too many pieces to my sandwich? Okay. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to see at home, but it did add some fine texture. It's not overpowering. It's just right to make it a little more festive. Okay, so then we're just gonna now add our little piece of cardstock. This is the Lights of Glow paper. It comes six by six, but I have cut this piece to be four across and two down. Add some adhesive, and you can see both sides are, <laughs> I love, so it's hard to cover up. But I'm going to, okay, and then I think this ribbon is completely old, but I am trying to use up some older ribbons that I have before buying the new ones. So any ribbon that you have that gold, um, you could definitely go with like a silver. If I do silver, I will typically go with a white card base instead of the vanilla. That's kind of my only um, recommendation. So then we have my card base, which is 11 by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. Okay. And you're gonna put your adhesive on the back. Evie, no barking. Okay. And then for our little Scotty dog, we're gonna use the small dimensionals. I don't really like the small ones, but so that the dog sits nice over the ribbon, I am doing my dimensionals so that they will fall above or below the ribbon line. And these mini dimensionals are, um, I just happened to grab this sheet. When you order the black dimensionals, it comes with the large size or regular size and the minis. It really doesn't matter which color you use. Obviously the darker ones are meant for when you use darker color cardstocks. Okay, and then to finish off this little guy, we're gonna punch out a gold bow. 
the collar. And I'm just going to use some liquid glue to put that on. Okay, and then we just need to do our sentiment. And for the sentiment, I pulled out, this is from last year, but it is a returning favorite, um, Christmas to Remember, which I love the fonts in this one. And then I'm using my Evening Evergreen. Oh, that's stamped pretty light. Let's try that again. I might need to re-ink this ink pad. Looks pretty good. Okay, much better the second time. They say that's why there's two sides to every sheet of paper, right? So you can turn it over. <laughs> and then um, the seasonal label dies also returning and some of those um, fit these sentiments perfectly. And again, for this, I'm matching up my um, stamped image and because I really want to make sure that this doesn't move at all, I am going to use a piece of washi tape. It does take me a little bit longer because I'm using the washi tape, but um, it's better than having this cut out wrong. All right, and I am just going to kind of pause here and we're going to run everything through the big shot at the end because I'm going to do... Let's get our next card set up. So for this one, um, my card base is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And again, I score my cardstock. Not everybody does. Um, it's just a. It, it is an extra step, but I find that the um, paper just just folds, and I make sure I get an even crease without um, too much of a struggle. This one, I am just. I'm not going to emboss the paper. I'm just going to adhere it. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I need to do my ribbon. Okay, I did the order wrong. And for this one, I am going to use the polka dot side. Oh, Evie. This time of day, she loves to go out on the front porch, the front yard. And for this, um, I'm also just gonna use scotch tape to hold it down. And then I'm gonna just wrap my twine around a couple times. Three is usually good. Like I said, I do things kind of in odd numbers. And the Baker's Twine, it comes in the pack of five and it's all of the in colors. So you get them in many, many, many different colors. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more adhesive, make sure that stays down. Okay, we already had punched out our little dog. And for him, because he is not as tiny, I am gonna do regular size dimensionals. I'm sorry, that didn't come out right, I don't think. Because the ribbon is small, I don't need to worry about him not sitting right. Okay, and then I cut um, a piece of our glimmer paper, which again comes in all of the in colors. And it has like an ombre, so I'm gonna kinda go like right, I like the middle. And I guess no matter what I do, I'm gonna have some waste, but. a Little bit harder to punch through the glimmer paper. All right, and you know what, I'm gonna use a glue dot. So I kind of vary my adhesives. Oh my goodness, he is too cute. Okay. And then one other thing that I wanted, um, losing. oh here it is, it's in black. Okay, so I thought it would be fun to kind of do some stars and hearts. These little die cuts are from the Charming Sentiments. 
So it is the SAMHSA and die bundle that cuts out the sentiments. Actually, I can show you right here. Um, sentiment silhouettes. So all of the dies cut out each of the different texts, which I love. But it also comes with some fun shapes. So the stars and the hearts are my favorite. And like I said, I'm going to get out my big shot. These I definitely could use the little mini one, but since this one is already here. It's almost time for a new plate. <laughs> but it still works. So. so because everything's on washi tape, it makes it so much easier. And then it's one less. I can do all three of these at the same time instead of doing each one individually. I apologize, the video is gonna shake a little bit. Okay. So these stayed sticking and these stayed on here. So when your plate is old, um, it really kind of gets stuck. It's kind of good to have fingernails. Which I really don't have. I am a nail biter and I know it makes my videos ugly so I'm really gonna try to stop or I'm gonna have to get like fake nails but then I feel like if I have fake nails I'm not gonna be able to do anything. <laughs> All right so with washi tape you just kind of want to like peel back very gently because you don't want to rip your paper after you just took all that time to stamp it, punch it, all of the things. So isn't that tag super cute? So I'm just gonna put this, oh God. Eve, stop scratching at the door, please. Tis the season and I am going to use these red and green adhesive. I didn't finish that. Backed pearls but there is silver and gold. They're just not mentioned in the title. And I'm using my take your pick tool because it just, it has a little putty end, which makes it super easy to pick up your um, embellishments. So just adding a little bit there. And so I was thinking about adding just a little pop of color with the stars, but I don't know. I kind of like the simplicity without them. Yeah, I think I'm gonna forgo the stars on this one and just leave him nice and simple. All right, and then this little guy, we gotta figure out a sentiment, which I thought about using. This is one of the free items you can get with the celebration. Um, if you spend $100, this is one of the stamp sets. And there's, I love the, the font. So I am gonna use this one. I picked um, I Miss You. And this one sadly does not have a die set that will cut out our text. So I am gonna either have to fussy cut it or find a different um, tag. Almost fits that, but I think I'm just gonna fussy cut. So with fussy cutting, it really just means using your scissors to kind of go around the text, which is what that other die set does. It basically fussy cuts your sentiments out. And with this, I just try to move the paper more than I move my scissors. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I think I'm gonna put the miss you up here. Tape runner's giving me trouble, so I'll switch to the liquid adhesive. Oh, wool barrier. I hope it's been filming me. Oh no. All right, I don't want to mess it up. I'm hoping this is still recording. I'm going to be sad if it didn't. Okay, so I thought the hearts would be cute, right? With the I miss you. I 
I've known so many people, well, not no people, but somebody I follow who is a fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Uh, I've been following her for like a year, so I feel like she's my best friend. Um, <laughs> but she shares like every week, you know, on her video, and so we like, I've been following her, and her 11th month old golden retriever was gone since July 3rd, but she just got it back this morning, and... But I was like a nervous wreck over a dog I don't even know. And then on one of our local resident pages, we saw a dog ran away, got scared by the fireworks. Um, so, but that dog also came home today. So now I feel like all the doggies are home. So <laughs> I'm a little more relaxed. Nope, that looks stupid. I don't know. Anyways, sometimes I put too much stuff on a card. All right, so I think we are good. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this video today. Please um, like the video or subscribe to my channel. It's greatly appreciated. Take care.